want to help. People want to help. And Karen, you have two beautiful daughters who are also grieving the loss of their dad. How the bloody hell did you cope, did you cope with like the demands of single parenting and also managing their grief on top of your own? Do you know what? It's so hard. And I recently did a podcast on this myself, you know, parenting whilst grieving because hmm. it is hard. It's finding the balance between showing your children your grief to normalize it for them, you know, because that they are experiencing what you're experiencing, you know, and they don't have the the mental capabilities to to put that into words to articulate what's going on for them they can't make sense of it so as much as yes I would cry in front of them I would share with them how I was feeling I also didn't want them to see me when I was collapsed on the kitchen floor one night and I know that sounds really dramatic but that's grief you know I just remember I was in the kitchen, I'd, I'd been fighting it all day, and all of a sudden, I just, it, you know, and it just comes out, and, and I, I was making these horrible noises, I was in a heap on the floor, and, and I didn't know what to do, and I remember just calling a friend, going, can you come around, I, the, I need you to just sit with the kids, or do something with the kids, because I, I, I'm in this mess, I don't think I made a lot of sense, but... Um, you don't want them to see you in that state because that's scary for them, but but you want them to see that you're sad so that it normalizes it for them. So whilst trying to let a bit out, but not all of it out, like it just feels impossible at times. And, and you can sense that, you know, that they're, 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 you know, walking around the supermarket, you're driving somewhere in the car and a song comes on and it just all of a sudden this wave washes over you and the kids are in the car and you're trying to function normally and the tears are, are streaming whilst you're trying to fight it and the kids are like, what's, what's wrong, mummy? And they're like, I just feel a bit sad. And then you can see that they don't really know what to say or do. My children grieve very, very differently. My eldest just almost felt like she had to step up, I think, and and look after me and be another adult in the house and help me bring up my youngest daughter. And she didn't want to add any extra pressure onto me by showing me her grief. So she very much put up a, a barrier and, and didn't talk about it. Just, just mm. didn't, she never, I have to say it's only in the last year or so, and I'm coming up seven years that she started to say to me, I miss dad. I miss him. Mm. And it's sad. And I've got, and so really, you know, for nearly six years, she never cried. She never said, I miss him. She never let it all out and went, this is rubbish. I want my daddy and nothing. There was no expression. My youngest, God, you know, in the early days, I couldn't comfort her. It was just oozing out of everything. And I couldn't calm her down, but I would lean on a family and friends, but we've got charities in the UK, Winston's Wish, I know there's others as well, Child Bereavement UK, but I use Winston's Wish. They, they were based near where I live. And they had a, a, a call, a line that you could call 24-7. And the amount of times I did, you know, and, and they were brilliant at giving me tips. And I think one of the, the best things, I think two things, actually, the, the school gave the children a card that just had a picture of a home on it and said, if you're ever in school and you feel funny and you want to go home, you don't have to say anything, just show me this card and I will phone your mum and, and she can come and pick you up and you can go home. And I think that gave, they never used it. They never used it. But I think they knew that it was there and it was safe for them. Do, do you know? And I think that's so comforting for children. So that was amazing. But also having something tangible for children with my youngest, when she would just lose herself in her grief and I couldn't comfort her I couldn't cut she would fight me she was screaming it was horrible mm. and I didn't know what to do but they said to me create a box so I had in this box some cards that the girls had written to their dad cards that the dad had written to the girls um some of his handwriting his watch his wedding rings we had a lock of his hair pictures a, a jumper just stuff that she could and it worked it was like magic she well, I would just take her when she started to break down, we'd go and sit down. I'd put some music on. She loved the song that we played at the funeral, Caravan of Love. And she'd like play the song. We'd put the song on and she would just sit and go through this box. And she'd calm down. And she would just sit and we'd talk about him. And it, and it was like, wow, I would never have thought that would be the thing that helped. But it really did. And I think it's it's the it's the co-regulation, isn't it? It's the sitting with them and just calming yourself down. I think the more uptight you're all getting and the more upset you're all getting, you just feed each other. So I think it's it's really helpful to learn some things that either getting out 
being in nature, going for a walk, putting some music on, breathing, calming your, yourselves down. I think things like that are really helpful as well. But, but what works for one child won't work for another. So you're forever just like trying all these different techniques and tools to, to try and gain some normality in your home whilst navigating everyone's grief and and I find it hard because I'm a very open person, as you can tell. I <laughs> just talk and talk and talk. And I will share how I'm feeling. My eldest, because she shut down, we clashed. We clashed because I, I couldn't get through to her. And that was really difficult for me. But she found my openness uncomfortable. So it, it's really tricky terrain to navigate, you know, and, and there's no dressing up. And again, I think you have to ask people for help. You have to keep the lines of communication open. And it's and for me, I think spending time with my children, and I was fortunate, I was really fortunate that I could take that time off work and, and be with them as much as I could, you know, in between trying to, to sort myself out as well and trying to have some fun. As much as those mm. first two years were horrendous and they really were, that you know, I always refer to the first two years as the early days, the hardest. But, you know, it doesn't mean it just suddenly gets easier after two years and it's all sorted but I think it's those early two de two years I also had some amazing times you know we achieved some incredible things we went to Disneyland we went to Lapland and saw Father Christmas we had a an amazing family holiday I learned to tow the caravan all by myself we went off and 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 did that together we had amazing days out we went to London and did the open top bus so as much as it was horrendous I really loved to just highlight actually amongst the hurt and the pain and the heartache you will be making some memories as well that you will take forward with you and I now look back on some of those times even in those first very early days those first two years and they bring a smile to my face and I kind of go do you know what that was amazing and and that was lovely actually um, as well as acknowledging that it was properly horrendous as well.